Good morning, everybody. It's the uh, meeting of the Stackbridge Planning Board, or I mean, of the Stackbridge Assessors. <laughs> and um, I'm Gary Pitney. I'm the chairperson, uh, Doug Goody, and uh, Tom Stokes. And today is the uh, 16th of August, 2021. Morning, everybody. So we're going to start. Um, oh, Kim, can you just grab the last week's minutes? I don't think we have any. I think I carried it over. <coughs> don't try. <laughs> Now, the one thing that was I had that we discussed, I did put it down again with an update. Um, <clears throat> which is number two, the um, update on the fiscal 22 sales analysis values and tax rate timeline. So we're in the, as we discussed in our last meeting, we're in the process of getting our values, uh, fiscal year 22 valuations approved and the tax rate uh, process in place. It usually takes a couple of months. And last time we talked about the sales ratio study and that is finished and the entire um, valuations are ready to be submitted. And they're actually, the way that they're submitted is by submitting the sales analysis to the Department of Revenue they will then review it and make sure that we conform to certification standards and they will um, approve that. And so I will, I'm actually working on personal property now. Um, that's always the last step. So I will probably be taking this week and part of next week to work on finalizing the personal property. Once that's finished, we upload our sales data to Gateway, which is the system that the state uses to, to review our data. And then once the sales analysis is approved, we can move forward with getting our new growth, which is new construction um, taxation uh, approved. And then that starts the tax rate process. So right now we're right on schedule to submit, let's see, it's I would say mid-September for everything. So we should be looking at possibly having the tax classification. It would be great if we could have it earlier than last year, um, which was at the end of October, maybe mid-October. So that would be the goal, but it all depends on, because things are once again changing um, with, COVID and the state being available for um, helping us with this. It, they're all still working from home. And so it'll be a matter of just getting everything in and waiting to see how quickly the turnaround is going to be. The tax rate process, like I said at the last Board of Assessors meeting, is going to be a little different this year because we have a few new uh, members that work here, the accountant and our treasurer who um, will familiarize themselves with the process that we use to get the tax rate set. And I will go over everything that needs to be done and we'll all help one another to make sure that we can get the documents in on time and approved. There's really no specific changes to the documents. The tax rate process is still pretty much the same. Um, it's just a matter of how quickly can we get it in and how quickly the turnaround is from the, um, the Department of, of Revenue. We don't want to give out any uh, valuations right now or um, ideas of what where the tax rate's going to be until we get closer to the tax classification and I start preparing the um, information for the uh, Board of Selectmen. And that will be a public hearing once we do um, get everything approved. The, the public will know when that will be, it will be posted everywhere. Uh, number three, it, we have discussed the, um, well, there's a little bit of history to this. The 
Clause 41 tax deferral has been brought up uh, for conversation as a, an alternative and an extra um, option for the elderly to have a, um, not necessarily a reduction in their taxes, but a deferral in their taxes. And this was uh, something that was brought up by our town administrator, Mike Nallis, and um, our select board who want me to get some information together because we haven't been using the 41A tax deferral. There was a process involved and they weren't sure of that process. And honestly, I wasn't 100% sure either until I started doing all the research, calling other communities and finding out you know, exactly what is involved. What I did do is submit a um, email request to the legal department at the Department of Revenue, just because I wanted to make sure that I had the information correct on um, if the selectmen wanted this, you know, to be done, what is, what's the procedure? Is it a local option? Is it already in place? What would they have to do? Because um, I have had some inquiries about it and I wanted to be prepared. So I talked to um, John Gannon at the DOR, he's an attorney, and we have to direct all of our information now to uh, by emails because everyone at the DOR was working at home. So the turnaround on getting uh, information back, this almost took two weeks um, from my initial conversation. And the initial email was basically, how do you go about enacting a tax deferral if uh, an elderly person of 65 years of age or older was interested in deferring their tax? Um, because of hardship, there is, um, a, a big procedure that you do have to go through. Um, there's an application process and there are limitations to the income. So I did find the general law on that and I made sure that I verified with the attorney uh, going forward. I did not want to overstep you know, on this at all. So basically what I asked is, um, two questions about the, um, one was about the clause 41A and the other one was, there was another interest in actually increasing the tax amounts for the 41 um, exemption that we give to the elderly. Cause right now the elderly receive $500 if they qualify off of their fiscal year taxes. Now other communities have taken that 500 and increased it to either 1,000 or 1,500 by increasing their overlay and offering, I mean, $500 right now is not very realistic. It's been that way since I've been an assessor for 31 years. And the, the state has always kept it at 500. We have the extension on the 41, which allows the income and the equity limitations to be higher based on the cost of living adjustment. Even that won't adjust the 500. It leaves the 500 and that's what comes out of the overlay. We get reimbursed for it. Uh, what would happen with this is it would be the same application process. And I need a little bit more clarification from the DOR on if that's a, a local option or something that they would have to do. If, if, they, if the select board can actually at a regular meeting increase that or if they have to wait until the town meeting in May. I still have not received an answer on that. What I did receive um, an answer on and, and took a little bit of processing because I was under the impression, and so was in our town administrator, that the 41A tax deferral, because it is a separate program, had to actually be voted in. And according to this, we already have it. So there's no vote. The only vote that has to take place is if the select board wants to change the interest rate, because there is an interest rate involved for every year that you defer your taxes. And at the current amount, it's between, I believe, 8 and 16%. The select board, uh, and actually the income limitation right now is 20000 per year. So the applicant cannot make more than... 20,000 in the savings accounts and uh, social security or any monthly amounts, 
right at the moment cannot be higher than 20,000. That's written into the, the general laws. However, when I was researching other communities to see who had this, their amounts are all over the place. Some of them were 50, 60. I saw one that was 80,000. That was out at the Cape. You know, the 80, 80 grand around here is uh, unrealistic. But so going to vote on that, they're not actually, according to the email from the attorney, they're not voting in the 41A tax deferral. They're actually making a decision to keep the 20,000, bring that threshold higher so more people would qualify and taking the interest rate and you can actually go, you can go to 1%. You can go to any percentage except zero. And that has to be documented and voted on by the select board. There's a lot more clarification because my final email to the, to the attorney was, I gave him an example. I said, if we had right today, um, a, an elderly taxpayer that is 65 years old, and qualifies, makes less than 20,000, and asked for the tax deferral, what would we have to do? Because we have never handed out an, uh, an application of any kind. I have yet to get that response. That's the response to me that will clarify, you should have been doing this to begin with. This is a program. And I actually looked in the general laws and I looked in the, uh, they, the attorney sent an attachment with the, um, Assessor's manual, the new assessor's manual from the DOR. Nowhere in any of that documentation does it actually state that the select board has to enact this at a town meeting. All it states is if the select board would like to change the limit, you can bring it up to this amount. Of course, that generates another question. When do they do this? If that's where they want to go about doing that, is it any one of their weekly meetings that they just put on an agenda and say, we would like to increase the income limit on the 41A tax deferral to 50,000. And I have talked to a few um, assessors, I won't mention what communities that have actually said, you know, they've kept the 20,000 and believe that that's fair um, because of the area. And, and the, honestly, I, I don't know how many would be interested in this? It is a process. There is a lien that's put on your property. That's very important. Um, that lien will remain on your property until you either die or you sell your property. That, that is so the town of Stockbridge can recoup the number of years of taxes as well as the interest. And again, that interest amount can be um, lower, increase, you know, what, whatever, um, up to 60%. We pay for the lien, but they, we pay for the lien up front, which at this time is $105 for every lien up at the um, registry. It's the same amount as the chapter lien, but we actually keep, the treasurer would keep track of that amount and they would have to pay that also at the very end. So the, and I, I have seen the application. It's very similar to the 841, and 17 exemption. However, there's a separate page with all write-offs where people have to sign. And if there's a mortgage on the property, the bank has to sign it too. So what happens? Uh, Which is going to be a lot more work, you know, tracking down the banks. A question. Uh, it seems to me that 20,000 is ridiculously low for a town like Stockbridge. It also seems to me that uh, Given the percentage of elderly people in Stockbridge, this may well be an appropriate thing for us to be proactive about, rather than just wait for the board of selectmen to be making some kind of recommendation. You know what? You know what I noticed when I was going through. I just took an evening and I just decided to look up. I did a search for it and pulled up as many Massachusetts town. Every community I pulled up had a web page that went into extreme detail about this. They had, you know, we've got the senior work off, we have the clause 41, the 17, we have the circuit breaker program. And if you want to get the form, hit this and go there. And I was telling Roxanne that, you know, I actually felt 
a little bad that we didn't have more of an emphasis on what we have available and could have available, you know, um, just to describe it. But at the same time, I wasn't sure that this is something, and Patrick wasn't sure either. I didn't find this out until late last week that this is already here. It's some. It's one of those things that you just have to deal with if, if it comes up. You know, if someone were to walk through that door, we've got to figure out how to implement it, and we've never done it before. Well, I think uh, that suggestion of having a web page, a period of different options, if you're a senior and having trouble. Like, yeah, because this is way more involved than just your typical, absolutely. I'm a senior and I would like to apply for the $500, um, you know, but we have seen, we have the work off uh, and, and we also have the aid for the elderly. And there is, there's documentation on, on the site, but I mean, I, there were videos of the Board of Assessors on some of the sites describing all of, I mean, it was really neat. It was, um, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these sites won awards. I mean, they, they were so involved and the abatement application process was <clears throat> seamless on the site. There were so many links to everything. But again, when I was looking, I was under the impression that this has to go to town meeting. This has to be a vote and we've got to have everything ready. So I was, I will say I'm a bit, shocked and maybe it's my own fault you know that I did not know this you know that this this is um something that is available and again and I'm going to ask you guys do you think it's a good idea for me to also talk to Ray Miaras about this I think you should push it off to Michael and ask Michael for his suggestion right as the town administrator he actually wanted to come to our meeting today but on vacation for tomorrow. Well, following up on Doug's suggestion, uh, coaching Michael and uh, certainly Patrick, who's been proactive on these. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I did talk, I briefly and filled Roxanne in about it. For sure. Yeah, because I know I. All the select board, but I'm actually thinking uh, that maybe something similar to the pilot committee, but a different committee that brings in different stakeholders in town to come up with, you know, here are all the options that right. what different towns are doing. We did it. Roxanne and, and I worked on something like that for the website where I, I did a description of every, you know, the, the senior work off, the aid for the elderly. So we do have that, but this is, this is so more involved. I mean, this is a commitment. You, you can't go into this blind. You know, this is something that is for someone that's 65 years old that may not have children that can help them with this application. We can certainly get um, more clarification so we know exactly what we're talking about and how these things are implemented. But I, I want to just stress um, that it's it's not something that is just a fly by the seat of your pants. I'm going to do this. It is a, it's a commitment. And um, we have to have all of all the ducks lined up because, you know, there's a lien. Again, a, a lien is a big deal on a property. And there's also ownership um, uh, things that come up if it's in a trust, if there's, you know, more than one name mm -hmm. on it. There's, there has to be. And what if they're on one of these um, reverse, mortgages. reverse mortgages? That's another thing. The bank may not sign off on it. So I, I just want to throw out the idea of, I know God knows we have enough committees in town, probably too many committees, but nonetheless, I right. think this is should be an ideal commitment. Well, I know an ideal case to get. Yeah, I agree. You know, just the different stakeholders. Yeah, I mean, I wanted, I wanted you know, to. Dr. Ken, you know, just the different components of people, and uh, come up with. Uh, I think your idea is the, not your idea, but what other towns are doing in terms of web pages. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt, I will say, I, I just felt that it was, it was just, uh, we could have done, we could do more. So that, that's what I'm trying to say. To whatever is ridiculous, you know, it should be some interest, but it should be minimal. Yep. Uh, the, well, I think Patrick um, was going to talk about, I, I didn't have a chance to tune into their meeting last week, but it was on the agenda. 
Um, and I know this, this could be an alternative to, you know, the residential exemption or right. um, some of the other exactly. more controversial things that where this is targeting the demographic that he's concerned about yeah. and not ruffling feathers for the entire town. This is something that would, and, and again, for those, I mean, there's, there is nothing worse than being house poor. And I don't care what community you're in. If, if that's something that you're dealing with that I, you know, I may have the impression that that's impossible in Stockbridge, which I don't, but there could be some that think there's no way that anyone could qualify for this. That we're not, we don't know that. There could be someone that comes forward and we just have to be prepared to um, give them the correct information and not to scare them at all, but to say, this is available um, and we can go forward with this, but this is a process. And what, what, what I did find out is it is treated as a tax title property by our treasurer. So she would have to, we would do the reporting of the lien. She would keep track of the property as a tax title entity, not be sending out delinquency notices, you know? So there would have to be a definite um, more communication between this office and that office, which we communicate well anyway. Uh, so this is, again, not something we've done before, but obviously something that if all you have to do is do a Google search and you're going to pull up many, many communities in Massachusetts that are doing this and handling it like it's been an option that's been there all the time. I was just hoping that there was something that the state could show me in an IGR or a bulletin that initially showed, okay, this is how you get the ball rolling. But what I'm being told is the ball is already in place. You just have to figure out the actual technicalities of it. So definitely uh, appropriate that we be involved in this. And I got the email here if you guys want to go through it. So I, I think the next step is definitely to talk to my. Yeah. So I think, but I think we do have two things to discuss, or two, and one is going to be aid for the elderly. So again, we offer aid for the elderly. Which is reimbursed by the state 100%. Oh, then you mean the statutory exemption? Correct. Yeah. So we have the option to increase the statutory exemptions to something. Right. That's a, I, think this, I think Patrick wants to do both. Right. So we have, yes. two, we have two decisions to really make, and one being, you know, 41A, but also right. these other statutory. And, and actually, I was concerned. And I didn't get this answered by the state, so I've got to talk to Ray or you know uh, to get the technicalities uh, out of the way. Is we have the forty-one and we have the seventeen. Can you just at one of the meetings, the select boards with maybe us attending, increase that amount, or do they have to wait until town meeting to do it? And do they have to get the public input on that? I don't think the public are involved in that. I think they make that decision. But I need to feel, I just was hoping they would give me all that in one email and say, okay, this, but it, it seems like, all right, you answered this, but I'm, I'm not, am I hearing you correctly? I want to get this information straight. Um, and, and uh, you know, they're basically telling me, yes, you just, you just got to figure out your options. And what impact does one have on the other when you're doing the uh, application? So they all operate independently? Yeah, the, the deadline for filing the deferral is the same as the others April 1st. So that got extended during the um, municipal modernization. That that now, the only thing is, is what I've been reading is don't wait to the last minute because there's a, there is a process involved. And I, I think you have to have that application dated on or before April 1. You can file the deed or the, the lien later on, but you have got to have that um, in place. And, you know, we definitely should have some type of in-house brochure that we can hand out. The state has one, but I feel it's very vague. I don't think right. it's descriptive enough for Stockbridge. So we could work on that. Um, again, I would like to see where the select board stands on all of this. I know my initial conversation was that, you know, is this something that can be brought up at classification? There's no reason you can't talk about it at classification, but I'm there for tax classification. And that, that is the most important thing to 
get that done and have the tax be able to get the tax rate set that week because we're all you know we want to make sure we have the um, flow of cash coming in from the tax bills. But at the same time, it's very important that they understand it as well as us that right now, again, I I have the application, but there would definitely be if someone came in, I would have to say, look, you have to be patient. We, okay. I mean, the, right now we just can't do anything anyway because you've got to wait until the tax bills go out so listen, or you pass uh, that deadline. We're all way over committed, but it seems to me that it's timely that as a board, we you know, take some responsibility for it. Definitely. And uh, I mean, I can put together so know, something pretty quick. You could do that, but I'm also wondering one of the three of us might sort of rep be the go-to person on this. Well, uh, if the, I know they wanted me, well, Patrick had initially liked the idea of doing a presentation in front of the select board about this. Um, how do you feel about that? At uh, like one, I mean, I, again, I don't even think they're aware of it, because I, I just found out. Before he that presentation, he should confer with us. Well, that's right. Mike would make the presentation to the select board. Right. That's what the board Yeah, and actually, oh, okay. I had already talked to Mike about maybe right, doing right. something, joined together. Right. You well, know, I don't think at, we're there yet, though. I mean, I think we have more information. Yeah. Yes, well, yeah. And I think the public needs to be, this is similar to a reverse mortgage, but instead of the lien holder being some random bank, the lien holder, quite frankly, is yes. the town. Yes. Uh, and uh, so and reverse mortgages can be controversial. And, uh, and so I think any person who enters this 41A has to really realize what they're doing because they are right. They are still going to have to pay the taxes. They're just going to be deferred at some yes. interest rate that has not really right. been determined. And, and income amount. Yeah. And I, I think- Age, income. Yep. I think the, the fact that any lien is on your property is you know nothing that you just do like well, I said right, by the seat of you're going to want to deal with these properties yeah. that's for sure well right. and, and the thing is I'm not sure so all probably state municipal liens are in advance of a mortgage right. and so even if you have an existing mortgage mortgage I think this lien would jump automatically in front therefore I that's why so. the bank has to sign off mm -hmm. so it'll be questionable what if they do if they do it yeah right. absolutely Right. That's yeah. why I feel right Certainly now. Be, and they're against their best interest. Yeah. Really. Especially if a house is highly leveraged. And yeah. Not do it. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I think there's. There's I a mean, lot of factors. There's a lot there's of factors. No there's a lot of things to consider for the town and anybody that uh, would want to even consider uh, right. entering into this program. But they have it as a, at least an option that if yeah. someone could do it and that was their decision, we want to just make sure that we give them the best information we can and have it backed up by the Department of Revenue because this is their program. Yeah. You know, this is a statutory program that they implemented that we're just carrying out. So, but the 41A and the other program is the Yeah. Right, Any, anything with a, um, you know, there, on, this, on this, there's nothing to reimburse, but you've got a lien on your property now. I mean, it's like a it's very similar to a chapter program. I think, Mike, too, if, if you're going to do this, then it might as well just be a packet of everything that's available to them. With the increased amount in the... Uh, well, that, and then, you know, the aid for the elderly. Right. And, uh, yeah. You know, the, the others, others, the other yes. sections that they have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I think if once we do get this all clarified, I think it would be good to revamp the, our page on the on the website oh, yeah. there's something that's more interactive and real and that way we can just you know it's not piecemeal it's this is what we have this is what has been implemented this is what is an automatic and even the surviving spouse part of it is a little confusing to people um, so all that again we have something on there i just feel that it can be a lot more if you were to look at other um I'm not saying our website is bad. I'm just saying that there can be a lot more information that we can put out there and a lot more automatic links that will take you to um, the forms. And there was actually one site that I thought was amazing where you, you fill out the form online and it went right to the assessor's office. Wow. That was incredible. But the only thing is that, you know, when we're talking about usually the people that 
would be using our website might not be the same people that are looking for this. That's assistance. right. So we just have to make sure that we don't lose sight of how yep. to distribute the information. Good point. So I did put down, um, I will say I, um, the motor vehicle, we put that in down as executive session, at least for now, I until have, I get clarification. Listen, um, I do have a question. Yep, so we'll, but I wanted to see if there were any, um, if any questions about. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, <laughs> I jumped over it. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so the pilot committee is on announced last meeting is reactivating. There was this email that just came through from Jay Bukowski. Okay, well that actually uh, is one of the points I was going to. Okay. Uh, we we are uh, reconvening our first meeting, and I have to make arrangements, but I think there will be a hybrid meeting like this one. It will be on Friday, August 10th at 4 p.m. Uh, first week after Labor Day. And then some well, what, what was that? Did you say August 10th? Uh, September, September 10th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you picked that up. I'm glad you did. Um, very <laughs> glad you did. Thank you. So, September 10th is the Friday, the first Friday after Labor Day. And it will be an open, a hybrid type of meeting. Okay. Uh, Jay Wojewski, uh, who is our Intern is available to continue. He's no, he's graduated from UMass, so we're oh, going great. to discuss those terms. But we do have funding in our pilot account. That will be more. We did not need a special appropriation this year because we have more than enough from previous years. That's good. Uh, speaking to Jay's email, we really do need to have the uh, select board to reappoint. The committee. And at last meeting, uh, I announced that we were thinking about adding to the committee. And we oh, have like, one person volunteer that of uh, interest. And uh, I see Roxanne is on this meeting and she's going to be with us Hello. on October 10th. Is that correct, Roxanne? Anyway, uh, I did clear right. the date with Roxanne. And I cleared the date with the I have it. Two cents. And with <laughs> I don't know how many times you even think about it. But we have. Are you there, Roxanne? She's muted. <laughs> okay. So, yes, we, we will. Uh, did, you, did you want to mention Peter Strauss? Hi guys, hey no, Michael. Hi, I'm Hi, I'm sorry. I had a call from town hall, but I'm here. Did you have a question? Uh, I don't have a question right now. Just confirming that I was confirming the date that I've already cleared with you that our first pilot meeting would be on Friday, September 10th at 4 p.m. And uh, I, I I just asked if that was still a good time for you, but you you did tell me last week that it worked, so I'm presuming that's the case. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly correct. And then I'm also uh, suggesting Roxanne that the board of selectmen needs to reappoint the members, and that's Gary, myself, uh, Dave Bykowski. Uh, and we are going to nominate, we'll remain nameless for this meeting, but we have had one person express interest, and we may, between now and then, have uh, another person that we might suggest that, that be included in our committee. Well, we can check, but we did do the annual re the, the appointments, um, I think it was uh, two, three many meetings ago. Well, so I can... that... that needs to be also uh, that information. Uh, yes, so we can talk about adding to the committee uh, the appointments you mentioned. Uh, that information also has to go to the town clerk because it's an official committee and she actually needs to uh, certify us as members and to swear us in 
as people in other committees do. I believe that's the current protocol. Does that, does that coincide with your understanding, Roxanne? Yes, it does. And I can check with Teresa to see if Terry received all those annual reappointments. Um, okay. So well, I can get I back to you. To Teresa uh, last week, she did not have that information yet, but uh, we should follow through on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're kind of working through people being on vacation and, you know, of course. they may have disconnected. So I'll make sure that that happens. Thank you. Roxanne. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. If, if, um, if, does anyone have any questions or issues relating to the clause 41 tax deferral or what we were discussing about the exemptions? No. So, you know, so one thing too, I think what we should do for future meetings, or we got to talk about this more broadly, is about how we're going to accept, think, accept um, responses and comments from the public. Yeah. Uh, because again, so, this is hybrid, so I don't, this is different. Yeah. So the thing is, we really need to talk about that know. and maybe talk to Michael about it because um, we can have them, we can have a comment period where they can comment. Mm -hmm. We can have them ask questions. So it just, yeah, we have to make a sure decision yet. of how we're going to handle comments or questions. How does the planning board do it? We usually do it based on uh, whatever <clears throat> the each meeting is different. So we'll kind of set it up. Uh, you know, if there's a presentation, we might ask for comments to be afterwards. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> and other things. <clears throat> excuse me. You know, it just might be. Um, you know, give and take. But right, after each item. <laughs> and, and, but also, I mean, like the, the full comment period, you, you know, you might need to clarify if it's comments or if it's questions mm -hmm. and how long that process will take. Because That's true. You might. We could yeah. be here for three hours. Well, yeah. So we just have to be careful. We have to think about that sooner than later. Too. Well, I guess, I mean, if it appeared like it was going to be a larger discussion, then we would. Uh, put it up for the next meeting. Or, or oh, that's true. Or, or that's the thing is maybe we should accept comments at the present meeting and respond back to the future meeting. Yeah, that's part that of yeah. too. If it's if it's something easy, that's certainly self-explanatory. But if yep. it's not, then yeah, we would get back to the, uh, to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, or an email or whatever. Yeah. Yes. So I think we do need to go into executive session. I think state that we're not coming back out of here. So. Right. Yep. Gary, can you do that? Uh, sure. So uh, at this point, um, we are going to go into executive session to discuss um, motor vehicle exemptions and abatements. And uh, at the end of at the conclusion of that discussion, uh, our meeting will end, and we will not come back into public session. So I need a second a motion or a motion. Oh, no. You seconded it. Oh, second. Okay. All in favor. Okay. So all those in favor, Gary, aye. 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 Good. Okay.